What is the shittiest advice you've ever gotten? Was told I should practice drinking and driving so I could figure out exactly how much I can drink and still be able to drive safely. Oh good lord, that's like saying you should practice doing meth so you can figure out exactly how much is an overdose. In both cases the ideal answer is, don't do it at all. Practice ramming your head into walls to find out what kind of an impact you can take without dying. It's called stress testing, and it's vital to the process. In my junior year of college my advisor advised that I drop out and focus on raising my baby that was on the way. I told one of my teachers what she said and he said, what, no that's stupid, I'm your advisor now. Graduated on time, raised son. It all worked out. Look at me. Look. At. Me. I'm your advisor now. Dad, there's no future in those bloody computers son 35 years ago. I got similar advice in the early 90s about the web. We don't need internet. Who wants to read what random people write on a website? No kidding. No one will ever do that. When I was broke and halfway through college, my mom said, Hey I guess you have to drop out and give up. That's life, honey. Thank god I didn't listen to her shitty advice and pushed through. I now have my degree and am financially stable. Sounds like my mom. I was going to a community college and trying to get the credits to transfer to a bigger university here in Ga. and when I got in and was super proud of myself my mom says just finish up at your current school, it's the same thing. No it's not, my BBA in accounting is worth a hell of a lot more than an ABBA in anything where I work. I got my job because of it and have wonderful benefits. I don't talk to my mom anymore because she's a selfish addict pose, but this one really baffled me. Sell your cable TV stock in 1978. I live in a city that for 10 years was riding an oil boom. When I started planning to buy a house I told my friend that I can't afford a house or townhouse, even though the bank would approve me for a mortgage that was large enough. He said, word for word, who cares, it's only going to go up in value. Oil will never go down. Have a baby together, you will have a family, and learn to love each other. Great now we hate each other, and have a kid. My parents, circa 1991. Broke my arm in the 4th grade. The teacher's advice was to get a drink of water as the only form of medical attention until I finally convinced them to call my parents. It didn't fix my broken arm. Ha. Huh. I dislocated my knee in 8th grade, was told to walk it off. That didn't help. I accidentally broke my friend Petter's clavicle in the 7th grade and the nun overseeing recess told him to walk it off. It also didn't help. Sorry, Petty. Lol, there's a lot of these stories in here. As a previous teacher, I will say it is hard to know which kid is just faking it and which was one is legit. And it's also hard to know which injury is just a minor one and which is serious. My solution was just send the kid to the nurse every time. I probably sent many false positives to the nurse, but that's what she was there for. My mom said, if someone wanted to fight me at school, I should just let them kick my ass because they would get in trouble and I wouldn't. Even the assistant principal thought this was a terrible idea. Edit, this was in 96, 97, so a little before zero tolerance, but still a stupid idea. My sister's advice to me, if you're ever drunk and need to drive just do some coke. What is she up to these days? Probably coke. People won't judge you if you tell the truth. Guacamole. A guy at my school came out as a pedophile. Made a public FB post and everything. He would wear a pedo hoodie around. His claim was I'm attracted, but would never act on it. Never heard of him diddling any kids so maybe it was legit. He ended up marrying an Asian woman several years his senior. People are strange. Asian women always look like they are 16 until one day then all of a sudden they are 85. Have Asian grandparents, can confirm. No need for a lock. Get an axe and strap it to your bike. Nobody wants to mess with someone who has an axe, so nobody will try to steal your bike. I swear I didn't make this up the guy who said it seemed more than a little drunk though. But if the axe is on your bike, you don't have an axe. 
And if you're lucky enough to catch the person stealing your bike, they now also have your axe. I think it's fair to assume that a person who carries an axe on their bike may have multiple axes. Yeah, but if you steal their bike, there's a solid chance you've now got what was recently the largest axe they brought with them today. I went to the dentist once because my wisdom tooth was growing in sideways and cutting my gum and it was swelling up and really painful. The entire time he's looking at my teeth has trying to convince me to get braces for one crooked tooth I have in the front, and I keep asking him what to do about my swollen gum, and he told me to just brush your teeth harder. Also, just think more positive. Not me, but my old coworker was talking to a client, and she was complaining that a 12 year old girl sent her 13 year son nudes. Old coworker suggested she send them to her phone, then to her parents. I suggested that perhaps distributing child pornography was in fact not a good idea. What is your job? I hope not a teacher. Before I got married, my parents felt compelled to impart all sorts of unsolicited advice, as though we were children embarking on our first step into adulthood. I was 35, my husband was 32, we'd been living together for 6 years, and we'd had about 4 disagreements in that time, so we were reasonably confident in our choices. My parents' brilliant advice was that we needed to decide now who is in charge in our relationship, because otherwise we'll spend all our time fighting. They said both of their parents had that problem, so they just decided to do things right and make sure my father was in charge, so they never fought. The amount of selective memory and out and out bullshit contained within those statements still boggles my mind. Borrow as much as you need for college. Don't worry about how you'll pay it back, just have fun. Really really stupid. I went to a private college that cost over 100k. I owed 46k in student loans when I graduated. A $600 a month minimum payment on an entry level salary really limits your options post school. Who in the hell gave you that advice? The loan agent? Nope. High school teacher. Actually, several of them. Also a few other adults who should have known better. It's actually disgusting how common knowledge it is to just take all those loans. And then once you graduate, they tell you not to pay them back because there's a tax deduction for the interest. When I was diagnosed with aggressive cancer, chemo is poison. Don't let those doctors kill you, they just want to make a profit. If you fast and drink lemon water your body will heal itself. Literally the worst advice. I would be dead right now. I was getting a hard time in school from other kids. The advice I received was just ignore them. Anyone who's being bullied will tell you that simply ignoring it is not possible because bullies don't allow you to ignore them. Just ignore the theft, physical abuse, and verbal harassment. Yeah no, son, being with a woman is a lot like eating at a fancy restaurant. If you order the lasagna, you should eat the lasagna. That's the entree you picked, and you owe it to the lasagna to clean your plate. But as long as you're going to clean your plate, it's okay to try a bite of other foods here and there. That's not neglecting your lasagna, it's just making sure that lasagna is really as good as you think it is. And if you like a different dish more, it's better to find out now, before you're full. This said while encouraging me to cheat on my girlfriend, while we were on a family vacation. Good things come to those who wait. The worst advice you could ever give someone. It should be good things come to those who are patient. Waiting and being patient are not the same thing. You don't need to move away and go to college just stay here with me and I can get you a job down at the shop coming from my dad who is a mechanic and lives in a small town with a population of sub 4000 who has been making just above minimum wage all his life. That I better catch me a man because I was getting old. I was 19 and at the wedding of a 20 and 21 year old. There wasn't even alcohol because majority of the guests were underage. I'm no longer friends with those people for many reasons, not the ones that got married, they moved and we lost touch, but the ones telling me to catch a man still live in the same city and we don't speak. If I married the guy I was dating at 19 over 20, I would be a very bitter, angry person. Some people find the person they were meant to be with at a young age, I didn't and I'm glad I didn't succumb to the pressure, just because everyone else around me thought that they had. I met my husband when I was 25 and everything's been going good. I made the right decision. 
I was a teen dad supporting a stay at home wife and kid and was going to engineering school at the same time. I kept getting advice from adults that I should quit school, pick a safe job and work my way up. Why work a part time near minimum wage job or internship when I could quit and work full time as landscaper or utility worker and make dollar sign 3 dash for an hour more. That was 20 years ago. Today I probably make 3 or 4 times what a landscaping or utility career would have yielded and I'm in a career that I love. It's taken me all over the world and opened some amazing opportunities.